All right, hello everyone. Today we're going to be doing a deck spotlight on Fnatic Aggro. So Fnatic Aggro is not aggro, but where you replace the Militants with Fnatics, uh, the Banshee with Phantom, and the Commander Seth with Oxana. The reason to do this is that the Fnatic Aggro deck is looking to be a lot more powerful in ground combat. Fnatics and Scorpions will allow you to defeat almost everything in ground combat. So that's why you play the Phantom as your air unit, because you will you can already win ground combat with Fnatics and Scorpions. So you need something that uh, really lets you dominate the air. Now, other variations of this deck, uh, basically this is a nod aggro variant. So you can play the same deck, but with Banshee instead of Phantom. This makes you stronger against Fortress decks, but will make you weaker when you need your anti-air power. And the other variation is simply with Seth. This is almost exactly the same as a uh, not aggro deck. This is just replacing the Militants with Fnatics. This puts you even closer to not aggro, obviously, um, and makes you weaker again in the skies and removes the ability to use double boosted tanks. One of the main reasons to play this deck is to have a tank die, have a Fnatic, sorry, die near a tank, making it boost, and then use the Oxana boost to give it two boosts which allows the Scorpion tank to kill basically everything on the ground. Um, each variation has its own positives and negatives. The closer you get to not aggro, the more your matchups are going to feel the same as not aggro. And the further away you are, the closer you are to the traditional Fnatic aggro in the top picture, the more powerful your deck will be against the things that traditional not aggro suffers against. So things like Mutant Marauders and so on. Um, so... Now we're going to talk a little bit about what the deck is strong against and what the deck is weak against. So, the main reason to play Fnatic Aggro is that you are strong against Scorpion Tank and Predator Tank. Generally, your deck is stronger than a traditional not aggro deck in the aggro mirror. That is the main reason to play Fnatic Aggro. You have a huge leg up against other people playing traditional aggro decks. You gain some power as well against things like Mutant Marauders, Grenadiers, um, these expensive tier 2 anti-vehicle infantry traditionally give non-aggro a bit of an issue because they are quite beefy and it's difficult to remove them with the cheap units. Uh, Fanatics will shred through these things in a way that nothing in non-aggro can do. Um, the other reason to play this deck is you're stronger against Chemical Warriors. Chemical Warriors are a huge problem for not aggro. They're very, very tanky and they can fight wheels effectively. But Fnatics allow you to take these down quite quickly. So those are the main reasons to play Fnatic aggro. What are the downsides of Fnatic aggro? So the downsides of Fnatic aggro are that you are weaker to anti-infantry air. That's the main issue. So you are weak to Drone Swarm. You're weak to the Orca Bomber. You are weak to Venoms and talons and you are very very weak against snipers the fanatics cost three times as much as militants but have roughly the same hit points so they still only takes two volleys from snipers to kill them and then uh you've just spent three times as much for your unit that has died without doing anything um they're also this deck is very weak to fortress style decks so giga cannon is very strong against you and mlrs is very strong against you this is because you do not have a proper air to ground unit. So if you want to be stronger against the Fortress style decks, it's better to play the Banshee variant. If you want to be stronger against the air decks, the Phantom is more important. Without any further ado, let's uh, let's get into it. We're gonna play we're gonna play like five or six ladder games with this deck. Alright. First game against Neandor. So the Fnatic Aggro deck wants to open with wheels rather than uh, barracks. Uh, regular not aggro can open barracks or um, open barracks or war factory happily, but with Fnatic Aggro I really think you want to open wheels because they're much cheaper. Okay, so the opponent has gone for lasers first and is going after our harvester. Pretty easy to we'll just head him off with the wheels. Get a second wheel squadron. Now it'll take for it'll take a while for his second missile to arrive, so we can pressure him. There is the second missile. So we're going to make a third wheel. Uh, with not aggro, I would recommend going into militants at this point. But with the fanatic aggro, 
we want to make a third wheeled squadron and try and get 2v1s because the fanatics are more expensive. Alright, so our opponent's gone bikes. We are going to also go bikes. Try and trade. And we're going to try and block for our bikes with the wheels. And then we'll get fanatics for his lasers. Now we want to try and go into tank here. Tank plus fanatic is really the, the, the combo we're looking for most of the time. It's also good against the bikes. Alright, so we keep our fanatics and our tank close together. And we make bikes for his buggy. We, uh, we don't have time to, to not be pressuring the middle. So we have to make the bikes. Whoops. Okay, I messed that up a little bit. Let him get the missile there. Alright, Giga Cannon. Giga Cannon is very good against this deck. Uh, on account of the fact that you don't have an air unit. But the way to beat Giga Cannon is to stop it from charging up fully. And then to uh, to try and get a boosted tank in there. So we'll boost the tank and go in. Fanatics also have good vehicle damage. So you can use Fanatics as additional support. And every time the Fanatic dies, it'll boost the nearby units. So when we get like boosted lasers and boosted tanks, that's how we're going to take care of most enemy units. Two Fanatics together will take care of most uh, enemy infantry troops. Because when one boosts the other, they uh, they go to town. And now here we have the double boosted tank. This uh, gives us the ability to just easily kill any Giga Cannon. Because we have so much mobility that we can get around the blocking units. That's really what we're looking to do as much as possible, is just to try and double boost our tanks. That's kind of the key to the deck. Alright, so we're going to suicide this Fanatic to boost the ones behind it. So then if he moves in, we'll have boosted Fanatics. Looks like he's not going to move in against them. And we'll swap the wheels and the Fanatics around. So now we have boosted wheels as well, which means we'll tear through his, um, his laser squad. And we're going to lose a Fanatic on purpose here to this buggy to get a double boosted tank. Which we'll use to kill Harvester and buggy. As you can see, we've got a ton of money right now. That's mainly uh, because we keep getting harvester kills. That'll often happen with a fanatic deck. You're able to get a lot of harvester kills. All right, looks like we're going to win pretty easily here. We have fanatics everywhere. We have the tank. All right, cool. Pretty, pretty simple. A little bit of a misplay on the first missile. Didn't move my uh, my bikes onto the pad. Mission accomplished. All right, the Reaper from Ascendance. When it's playing Jade, that means it's likely to have Chem Buggy or Chem Warriors. More likely to be Chem Warriors. Chemical Warriors, uh, actually this deck is better against Chemical Warriors than regular Nod Aggro because the Fanatics actually give you a way to kill Chemical Warriors, whereas Nod Aggro really struggles the with them. And mute his emotes. Our opponent opened rifles, we opened wheels so we can just hunt down his, uh, his rifles. And we're going to go straight into Fanatics. Because he only has one missile squad, we don't need to make the triple wheels, we can go for the uh, Fanatics right away. He has gone second missile trooper, which is good for us because we already have our fanatic ready to go. I'm gonna try and block him from getting. Oh, interesting. He's gone for bikes right away. Okay, so he's sending all of his uh, all of his lasers at my harvester. So he's just basically suiciding those. That's a pretty big misplay over my opponent, but sure, I'll take it. Now he doesn't have missile troopers to help him against the tank and uh, bikes. So we're gonna get our tank over near our fanatics. As I said before, fanatics actually have pretty good vehicle damage. So you should be looking to support your vehicle fights with Fanatics. Pretty simple stuff. We've got good matchups across the board. We've got all, mat all, all, all the pads and we're taking his Harvester. Alright, so we take all the pads, we take the Harvester. I'm going to boost my tank to run down these bikes that are going for my Harvester. Alright, pretty easy. We get some more fanatics. 
when we line up here. So when he kills my Fnatic, I'll get double boosted tank. There we go. So we'll slay his Harvester very quickly. And then the tank with double boost is great infantry support as well. Like it just, it just, it's just so powerful once it has the double boost. So now we're basically just looking to suicide our low hit point Fnatic squads and get some boosts. There we go. And we're blocking him from getting a 2v1 on our Fnatics with his militants. As you can see, the Fnatics are actually quite weak to militant spam uh, because they have so low hit points. They're actually not very cost efficient. That's why wheels are in the deck. Is to help you with those matchups, but yeah, he um, there are the chemical troopers, so we'll uh, we'll use the double fanatic on it, and you'll see how quickly it goes down. Fanatic damage is very high. All right, cool. Building a fandom for my bounty. All right, 54188. I believe this guy plays. Um, I'm pretty sure this guy plays uh, MG. Alright, so we're gonna go for a second wheel squadron here. Just because I think he's gonna make MG at some point. See what he gets up, gets up to. Probably gonna make a pit bull next, would be my guess. We'll get a tank. That's he wants he want credit to tank, okay. So we're gonna need to transition. Our tank loses to his tank, so we're gonna need to make lasers. Alright, and he's also gone for the Liang drone right away, which is interesting. We're just going to keep picking off dogs. And we're going to go for another tank. There is the MG that I was expecting. We're going to send our wheels at his MG. And we're going to boost our tank and just push in hard. Because we really don't want him to get this MG set up. Alright, the MG is set up and he does have Liang drone, so it's basically indestructible. Let's see if we can take this missile. Alright, so it looks like we are going to take the missile. We'll try and push the Fanatics in against his... Uh, against his MG as well. If he does kill the Fanatics, then we get double boosted tanks. So we're basically look, really looking to try and stop him from pushing up his, uh, his MG. If he can push up the MG, that's very bad for us. So we are just going to keep making tanks, probably. And have him hang around this fanatic. Alright, here comes the tank push and the uh, MG. So we push on the MG, make sure that doesn't get set up, and then we micro our tanks around to get multiple defend, uh, to get multiple 2v1s, which we do manage to do. And we're going to push in on this, uh, this MG with our tanks as well. Alright, so the MG does get prevented from setting up, and because we prevented his MG from setting up repeatedly, we do take the game. So that game was really just about making sure his MG doesn't get set up. But we really only made Fanatics and Scorpions in that game, because <laughs> that's all we really needed. Alright, Andy. I believe this is uh, the Andy who is known as Avatar Andy. Pretty much always just goes Avatar. So we're gonna open wheels again. Avatar is actually a, a very difficult unit for this deck to beat because it has no air that can shoot down. Right, there is double harvester, so we're gonna go into bikes. 
and immediately start pressuring. It's quite easy to pressure on this map because you can put a unit here, which locks out their reinforcements. As you can see, he's made uh, he's made these these lasers, but they're gonna have to get through the wheels before they can get to the bikes. And then we just make another wheel squadron, and it's very difficult for him to get. He has to, he has to pull off of the Tiberium to get his units into position. We're gonna send the one-man wheel squad to um, to charge the missile, and then we bring in fanatics to harass his uh, harass his lasers. And then we're going to bring in another bike squadron to help us against the uh, against the harvesters. So we've almost got a harvester. The most important thing is that we fire this missile here. So we do that. Once that's fired, then we'll go back to harassing the harvesters. And obviously we have more money now, so we'll make a tank. And then we'll boost the tank because he's using bikes. And we should be able to kill both harvesters here. And we do kill both harvesters, nice. So basically we're really looking to close the game out as quickly as possible. So we want to make sure the missile is constantly charging. And we definitely want to make sure that we don't lose a harvester because then he can power out his avatar quicker. Alright, so there's no units coming out now, that means it's probably saving for his avatar. So we're going to get another tank, and we're going to send wheels to block its progress. Oh, interesting, cyborgs. Okay, I wasn't expecting cyborgs. Uh, it looks like the cyborgs are just not going to be quick enough, to be honest with you. Like most tech units. And yep, the missile fires, and we win the game. Cyborgs we could have killed with fanatics. Uh, avatar would have been a much scarier proposition. Objective complete. Complete. Stalin UK. Interesting. Three, two, one. New objective received. For the crystals. Building online. So we're gonna open with wheels. Alright, he's gone for MG, so we'll make another wheel squadron. Try and stop the MG from setting up, or if it does set up, then at least uh, kill it very quickly. And we do remove the MG, which is great. We should pull back our wheels. Oh, it's too late now, they're dead. We might as well just suicide them. One man wheel squad isn't worth preserving. So we're going to Fanatics because double missile beats wheels. And we're going to go for another wheel here because I'm anticipating he's going to try and set up his MG again. And I want to be able to pressure it. Oh, so he went shock troopers. Also a good reason to have wheels though. But we'll make another fanatic squad. And we'll get fanatics on missiles and wheels on uh, on the shocks. There's a turret, so we'll walk away from the turret. And we're going to suicide this wheel into it. I don't want the, uh, the squadron anymore. Right, second harvester. So we are going to block his. Uh, we're going to block his harvester from harvesting by just taking all of the pads where he can harvest. And again, like I said, fanatics have respectable vehicle damage, so you can actually use them to harass a harvester reasonably well. As you can see, the harvester is actually half dead with just two fanatic squads shooting it. Here comes a Wolverine, that's obviously going to kill our Fnatic, which will give us a double boost, so I'm just letting, I'm letting the Fnatic die so I can get double boost the tank. Which we'll use to kill his Wolverine and his Harvester. At this point the game is uh, is pretty much over. I'm not sure what my opponent can realistically make, we kind of locked them, locked them out of the map. So we're going to try and build, um, and try and build Phantom for my bounty. There we go. Alright, cool. Pretty easy. That's um, kind of how you beat tech, honestly. Like, this is a very bad tech map. It's almost impossible to make two harvesters.
All right, I believe this is also not a great map for Double Harvester. It's good for us, obviously. So we're going to open with wheels. I know he's going to go Double Harvester, but I need to get the scouting information just to make sure. And I also want to see if he's pulled them both to here or if he's left one up here. Okay, so he's pulling them both down. But bites. Uh, this is another map where I'm not a huge fan of Double Harvester. And the reason is that it's very easy to harass the Harvesters while standing on pads. So you get to harass Harvester and charge missile at the same time. Alright, so he's gone into bikes, that's fine. If he goes into bikes, we can just fight bike on bike. Like, you know, we don't need... We can go block his harvester up here. He's going to try and harvest up there, so I'm just going to block it with my wheels. That stops his harvester from harvesting. And then we'll go fanatics for the... Uh, for the mi missiles that are coming in. So now we just block him from getting onto the pads to ensure the missile fires. And then we'll make, uh, we'll make some more bikes. Need to make wheels for these flamers first. So two fanatics will kill pretty much every infantry in the game because of the boost. And then we'll get a tank. I need to just uh, get some fanatics down here to remove these uh, these lasers. If he does kill the fanatic, I'm, I'm moving the fanatic in on purpose because it will die and will boost my tank. And then we have double boosted tank to go and kill both his harvesters. Oh, I suicided my fanatics into the flamers on purpose to um, get the double boost. We're gonna double boost these wheels. Double boosted wheels will shred his uh, shred his uh, flamers, and then we just take all the pads and win the game. This map even worse than the last one for a double harvester, I think, because like I said, it's so easy. It's, it's impossible to not be charging the pads, basically. So the game just always ends very quickly because the pads are always charging. Establishing battlefield control. All right, Tommy, this is a good player. So it'll be interesting to see how this goes. I'm not sure if Tommy is playing uh, Venoms right now. If he is, then obviously it's a tough matchup. Venoms are extremely good against Fanatics. So he's opened with rifles, so we're going to pressure him with the wheels. And we're going to just try and get a 2v1 on these missiles. Okay, so he is a good player. He's kept his missiles back, doesn't let them get 2v1. That's smart. We'll go into Fanatics. And we can move the fanatics in to harass his uh, his uh, lasers, whilst the um, the wheels protect us from his militants. We're gonna let our wheels die here. That's just to protect our um, protect our bikes for a little bit longer. He can't get through whilst the bikes are there. All right, so we have a tank now. We're gonna need to back up and wait for our tank to arrive. So we take the first missile basically just through virtue of having more pressure on the board in the early game. Alright, I did manage to get the free shot on his tank. Uh, so he's gone Banshee, we're going to have to go lasers because we can't afford a phantom yet. Because Banshee's 15 as well, that's pretty scary. Alright, so we're going to move the fanatics in and protect ourselves with these lasers. And then if he kills our fanatic, we'll get the double boost. All right, so we're going to go Phantom now because he's committed to another Banshee. And we'll pull our fanatic back. I don't even think my Phantom can actually kill his uh, his Banshee. No, it doesn't look like it can because of the three level difference. All right, we've got another volley ready though. We need a tank here. We need to lose a unit so we can make a tank for the fight. Let's pull the fanatics back. Boost the tank in. Alright, we get double boosted tank because he killed a fanatic. So we're going to kill all of his bikes with our tank. And we'll send the phantom at his banshee. Yeah, his banshee actually lives through the phantom, which is unfortunate. So this is obviously going to make it a lot harder. 
Looks like we are still gonna win thanks to the lasers. All right, good job Fnatic Aggro. I think this was the, the best example actually of how much stronger Fnatic Aggro is against non-aggro in the mirror match. Um, being able to boost my tanks repeatedly, I was just able to sweep all of his uh, all of his ground units off of the field when uh, when my tank was boosted. So even even though his Banshee didn't die to my Phantom, I was still able to take that game, and that just shows I think how much stronger Fnatic Aggro is in the matchup than not aggro. All right, so that's Fnatic Aggro. Um, I will uh, hopefully you guys can try out the deck it's a lot of fun um i do think it is mostly strong in the mirror match against other not aggro decks the fanatic aggro is is the superior version i believe um but yeah it is weak to anti-infantry air that's like its biggest concern and uh, it's also quite weak to militant and rifle spam because the fanatics don't do that well against the uh, militants and rifles considering their cost all right, there you go, guys. Uh, if I was going to give this deck a rating, I would probably rate this as like a tier 1.5 deck. It's not one of the best decks in the game. It's very good, but it does have major weaknesses. So I would say this is the kind of deck you want to play if you're expecting to play against not aggro in a tournament. This is a great deck to pick up. Um, but for playing random opponent on random deck, I think it's one of the weaker ch shot choices. Because it can be so vulnerable to specific units. Alright guys, uh, like I said at the start of the video, those units are air and snipers mostly. Snipers make this deck very bad. Because they kill the fanatics in two volleys. And it just costs you a ton of money and you don't have good air options. Um, the deck is also very weak to fortress style decks. Because you don't have any banshee or any, you don't have any air, ground, uh, air to ground unit. So... Giga Cannon, MLRS, these can be very difficult to beat. Okay, I'll see you next time.